It's Sunday, February 1st, 2009, and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. I've got a bunch of ideas here to look at, so I'm going to go ahead and start out quickly with the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, in my opinion, looks like it's probably the worst index as far as the uh, major ones go. And uh, this, this market, particularly if it breaks below this uh, uh, this level in here at about uh, 43 or so, and I didn't draw that very uh, very well. But if it breaks below 43, then I think we've got the potential for a test here, and then down towards the uh, the lows that we saw last year. The best way I think to trade this is with the inverse ETFs, such as TWM. TWM gives you twice the uh, uh, inverse. Uh, return of the uh, Russell 2000. These are meant as only day trading products. So if you're looking for longer term short exposure, these funds aren't the best way to trade. But the TWM, when the Russell drops a thousand, uh, or I'm sorry, one percent, then this in theory goes up two percent. If you're looking for a little bit more action in there, then you can trade the TZA. The TZA is the Direxion fund, which gives you three times the exposure. So for every percentage drop that the Russell 2000 uh, uh, goes lower then this in theory goes up three percent so uh, they're very volatile if you're going to be trading the uh, shorter term funds that you know the, the the leverage funds that is you you know trade off the one minute time frames and two minute time frames don't look at these as longer term trades they're extremely dangerous if you're not quick and disciplined the uh, another group that I think looks pretty vulnerable is real estate. Uh, the Dow Jones Real Estate uh, Index is the IYR. This is the major index, and basically, you know, you've got some some bigger support down near that thirty dollar level. That if that breaks, then I think you're going to see some panic. The best beneficiary in there would be the SDS. This is two times basically short the. Uh, uh, IYR. So keep an eye on those. What I want to do now is go through the the, the stocks that I'd mentioned on Friday um, and clean up that list and give you a bunch of other ideas to look at. So we'll start out with level three, LVLT. I was, uh, as I've been saying, I thought it looked like if it could get above $1.20, then it was time to purchase this stock. If you bought this stock and if you're holding a loser, this is why you have to wait for momentum for it for it for a purchase because there's no odds buying when it's neutral we, especially when we're in a bear market and we're in a bear market there's a lot of risk out there so you've got to be very careful with any new purchases that you make so no trade should have been taken in level three same goes for coal what i was saying on kol was if this uh, market could get above fourteen dollars and thirty cents then perhaps it would be a purchase it didn't do that uh, ccj was kamiko uh, I had said if it gets above $17.30, basically right here, and you can see Friday's high was at about $17.20, then it looks like maybe the buyers are going to regain control. So no trade in there as well. UNG, there was no trade in here either. I was looking for some pullback and then strength. Instead, if you look at this stock, it, it, it gapped higher. You don't want to chase those gaps. Uh, and then it just completely failed, uh, staying below the VWAP right here initially and no reason to be involved in, in UNG. This is a broken market. It was just a, uh, a potential short-term trade, thinking that maybe it was going to get moving higher. It didn't do that, so there was no reason to be involved in that. So those were the stocks I had mentioned, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some new ones now. Uh, two bullish-looking ones. You know, they, they, Again, when I say bullish in this market, we're in a bear market. We're in a vicious bear market, so it's relative to a lot of other stocks. But if the market can uh, move higher, then a, a beneficiary of that might be something like Dish Network, symbol D-I-S-H. You can see that uh, it, it is starting to rally a little bit in here. And if it can push past this level, then maybe it goes back up towards 16. Looking at a 10-minute time frame, you can see we've got lower highs and lower lows right now. So no reason to buy. Maybe getting above this level will be conservative, uh, a little bit safer, I'd say. Maybe getting above that. Don't chase gaps higher. It is foolish to buy a stock that gaps higher in this market. You can say, well, it wouldn't have worked there. It would have, but the odds are against it. That's maybe one in 100 stocks that gaps higher will continue uh, higher. The rest of them are just completely failing. Another one, last one, is a potential long. Um, this stock's trading some pretty good volume down here. This is Maxim Integrated. Uh, 
products, uh, semiconductor related. But uh, you can see that we've seen some big volume in here. It looked like a little shakeout on Friday, uh, and it recovered nicely, trading that big green candle above the 10, 20, and 50 day moving averages. It's still not ready in here yet. Just keep an eye on this one. Don't purchase this one yet, but keep an eye on it for it to set up the next couple of days. Um, some short stock, stocks to look at on the short side. Akamai, symbol AKAM, looking like it's uh, found some resistance up at this prior level of support. Now on a 10 minute time frame, perhaps breaking below 1340, it gets going. I'd say worst case stop is above this level here at about, uh, uh, this is 13, let's say 1390. So that's worst case stop. What would be better is a rally maybe up to 1375 and then a failure. Then you can put your stop right here at about 1377. But AKM looks, uh, looks like it should continue lower. Uh, the shipping stocks have been real weak. NAT, which is Nordic American Tankers, has been pretty much a, immune to the bigger sell-off, but it's holding along this longer-term level that just keeps getting hit here on the support. You can see the big volume that it traded in January and a, a big red candle. So it looks to me like this stock may be re getting ready to catch up with some of the other uh, shipping stocks, like look at Dry Ships, uh, TK Shipping, and that sort of thing, uh, TBSI, or a couple other names in there. But this stock, look like the sellers are starting to really uh, get more aggressive in here and maybe breaking back below this level would uh, see some downward momentum if you get involved absolute worst case stop goes right up around this area 2965 uh, NDAQ I've been bearish on this stock from time to time uh, weekly time frame it's still hanging around this area that has been prior support uh, turning into resistance in here now in the daily time frame you can see we've seen another one of these little rallies in here and uh, on the 10 minute time frame it's breaking back down we've got a uh, five day moving average that's flattening out if you get involved in this one worst case stop right up around 2250 or so I think that this stock could fail you know miserably basically pool I was uh, talking about this one last week a few times really breaking below that level lights out on on uh, pool um, still looking like longer term, you know, down towards that $12 level or so. And uh, it's it's a thinner stock, so be careful with this one. Perigo is still hanging on the edge of this cliff, and I think it could just get hammered in here. I, I'm going to consider, again, buying puts and trying to hold them. As long as, you know, what you want to see is the five-day moving average flatten out or so. When the five-day moving average is flattened out and the stock holds below it. So, in other words, I don't think it's quite time to buy it yet. Yeah, but it sure looks like it's getting close with this failed move on Friday. But, you know, you trade in the direction of the five-day moving average. If the five-day moving average is declining, generally you want to give the benefit of the doubt to the sellers, but not after it's, you know, you don't want to be selling short after it's, you know, down four days in a row below that declining five-day moving average. You want to catch these things as the momentum starts to turn, and it may be starting to turn here on Perigo. If it does, then it sets up a much bigger failure, and I think it could get really ugly for the longs in there. Uh, same goes with Teva. I've been watching this one. Really still hasn't broken that bigger level down near about 41. Keep your eye on this one, though, because on this weekly time frame, you can see how important that level has been. We've got lower highs coming down to this. So the pressure is increasing on the longs and on the weekly time frame. You know, this stock has been pretty immune. So maybe it's time to do a little catch up. Same with uh, Vivo, which is Meridian Biosciences. Uh, longer term charts just look like, you know, the, the sellers are really stepping up the pressure in here and maybe breaking below these lows at about 2115 or so. If you get involved there, worst case stop, probably right up around that 2160 level. Insurance companies, uh, there's a... Uh, there's, there's an ETF for those, which is KIE. Uh, this is the Dow Jones one. But, uh, you know, here, Travelers looks like it's, you know, heading, getting ready to test back down towards that level. You can see here in the daily time frame, it's setting up pretty weak. We've got a little bit of support in here recently. Uh, the 30-minute the time frame is maybe a little extended here short term, but keep an eye on it. Same thing goes with uh, Chubb. CB is the symbol here. And uh, old Chubby here looks like he's breaking down. Um, so, 
you know, it's 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 a choppy stock though, so, so be careful with it. No specific recommendations on these. A couple other sectors that look weak are consumer discretionary, which obviously makes sense, and uh, that's the uh, XLY. XLY probably a little extended in here. Maybe if you get a bounce up towards that five-day moving average, then you want to look to to sell short uh, failures of any rallies. Same goes with the RTH, which is the retails. Uh, the retailers uh, RTH is a symbol here. It looks like it's, you know, this whole market looks like it's really in trouble. Those two longs that I mentioned at the beginning are just in case the, the market goes. Don't look at these as, you know, this market as anything bullish. Because there's, you know, it's really, uh, there's, there's just, it, it's an ugly, ugly market. There's still a lot of uncertainty on a lot of, uh, in, in a lot of regards. So you've got to just, you know, play a very strong defense and look more carefully, I think, at the short ideas.